In this video, I want to explain how we can represent heteroscedasticity in the matrix formulation of econometrics. And that's going to lead on to, in the next few videos, a discussion of how one can form blue estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity and how we can represent those in matrix form. OK, so we're going to assume that we have quite a simple model, which is just that in non-matrix form, yi is equal to alpha plus beta times xi plus an error ui. And we're going to assume that there is heteroscedasticity here. And the form of the heteroscedasticity is given by the variance of ui, given that I have xi, is just equal to sigma squared times xi squared. And notice here that the variance depends on xi, meaning that we don't have homoscedasticity, we actually have heteroscedasticity. And we're still going to assume that we have no autocorrelation or no serial correlation which is just that the covariance of ui with uj, given that I have xi and xj, is equal to zero when i does not equal j. OK, so how can we actually represent this in matrix form? Well, if you remember in the last video when we talked about how we can represent homoscedasticity in matrix form, we wrote that the variance of our random vector u, given that we have our matrix of independent variables x, which just equal to the expectation of the matrix where each of the components, before we simplified it, was just equal to, well, the first one was u1 squared, the second component in the first row was u1 times u2, and then we had, in the sort of last component of the first row, it was u1 times un. And then moving on to the second row, we had u2 times u1, then u2 squared, etc. And we were able to fill out the rest of our matrix, and the last component of our matrix was just going to be equal to u n squared. And each of these components is assuming that we have our matrix of our independent variables x, so it's actually the expectation of this entire matrix given that we have x. And when we assume that we have homoscedasticity, we were able to assume that each of these diagonal components was just equal to sigma squared, and assuming that we had no autocorrelation, each of the off diagonal components was equal to zero. Well, we can still assume that each of the off diagonal components is equal to zero because we're assuming that we have no autocorrelation. So we can still write each of the off diagonal components as being equal to zero. But for the diagonal components, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful. So if I take the expectations operator inside this matrix, we're going to have that the first component is just going to be the expectation of u1 squared, given that we have x. The second component is just going to be the expectation, or the second diagonal component rather, is just going to be that we have the expectation of u2 squared, given that we have x. And then if we sort of continue to the last component, or the last diagonal component, it's just going to be the expectation of u in squared, where I should sort of have a given x on inside the matrix here as well. But notice that each of these diagonal components now is actually in the same form as we stated the variance up here, because if we assume that the expectation of u i given x is equal to zero, then the variance is just the expectation of u squared. They mean exactly the same thing. So that means that we can rewrite our matrix just using this definition of the variance which we stated up here. So the first component is just going to be sigma squared times x1 squared. The second diagonal component is going to be sigma squared times x2 squared. And then the last diagonal component is just going to be sigma squared times xn squared. And we're still assuming that each of the off diagonal components is equal to zero. So we still have a diagonal matrix, which we could write as being equal to, let's say, sigma squared times the diagonal matrix omega, where omega here now just represents the matrix which just has x1 squared, x2 squared through xn squared on its diagonal with all off diagonal components equal to zero. And notice that this is in a very similar form to that which we found in the circumstance where we had homoscedastic errors, but that the matrix here, omega, is not the identity matrix. It isn't the identity matrix because each, each of the diagonal components aren't necessarily the same. They're not all equal to one. But notice that we can still write the condition of having heteroscedasticity in our model in a very simplistic form. And that's going to help us when we try and come up with blue estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity.